CSS. You should love it, but you are probably hating it with great passion. Regardless of your feelings, CSS is a big part of the UI UX process and it should never be treated like an afterthought when setting up your projects. Because of its apparent simplicity, it's never taken too seriously and I met a lot of experienced front-end developers during the years who avoid writing CSS whenever possible. In this video, we'll discuss four options you have to organize your CSS in an efficient manner in order to end up with a project which facilitates collaboration and maintainability. Just like with everything else in the dev world, there are no clear guidelines and no one-size-fits-all solution. In the real world, you'll work on projects that vary in complexity and in expected performance, your colleagues could be CSS experts or they might be complete newbies in this area, you'll have tight deadlines to meet or maybe your client doesn't really care about how the product is actually looking. So it should be obvious to you that a five-man dev team working on a SaaS startup accessed by hundreds of thousands of customers monthly will treat and handle CSS differently than a 20-man dev team developing enterprise software for the Swiss banking system. The first structure we look into is fully decoupling the CSS from your JavaScript code. I have seen this working successfully in large online ordering system processing tens of thousands of orders daily and in smaller startups with just a few thousands of paying customers. The main benefit of storing all your CSS in the designated folder allows you to have specialized CSS devs and designers who can work only on the specific directory without needing to mess around in your project structure and in your templating language. Even if you are using a preprocessor like SAS or not, you can save your styling rules in separate files based on the components and pages they target and you'll end up with a result fairly easy to maintain and understand. One drawback that you have to keep in mind is that your JavaScript components will not be standalone from the UI perspective. If your CSS is stored in a separate directory, you'll have to spend the time to extract these rules if you want a specific component to be reused in a separate project. The second option you have to structure your CSS solves exactly the drawback I just mentioned. You can define CSS files for each of the JS components you are developing. Libraries such as Angular or Vue have great support for this and they also offer scope CSS out of the box. This means that you can be certain that the rules you are writing for a specific component will not affect any other component sharing the same class name or structure by mistake. Libraries such as React are not as opinionated when it comes to handling CSS but you can use CSS modules to ensure your CSS is scoped correctly. This is my preferred way of writing CSS because it helps with modularity and code reusability but I find this approach requiring you to pay a little bit more attention to CSS rules and you'll need to find a balance between CSS CSS reusability and component modularity. In other words, if you want some general CSS rules to cascade through and affect all your components, these components will not be really considered standalone, and if you want fully standalone components, expect you'll have quite a lot of duplicated CSS rules. The third option I want to mention here is choosing a CSS in JS solution. This is when you really want to confuse your colleagues. Remember the time people were complaining about JSX and the fact that HTML is mixed with JS? Now we can take things one step further and then laugh at all those guys who impose best practices or clean code expectations. In all seriousness, this is a fairly popular approach these days and there are a wide range of libraries which can help you with that. They come with powerful features such as scoping rules or automatically adding vendor prefixes where needed, but you have to keep in mind that your CSS and JS code will be extremely tightly coupled. In my opinion, however, this approach is best suited when you want to add yet another known library in your resume and is going to be a great conversation starter three years from now when the whole team will wonder what on earth made you take this decision. The four Fourth option you have is to avoid writing CSS completely. Of course, you probably know that there are quite a lot of component libraries out there you can use to avoid reinventing the wheel. These components are already styled following a style guide such as the material or the flat design and you are probably using such a library in your projects already. What I want to mention here as an option though is Tailwind. This is a project enjoying great traction and support and is the perfect fit for developers who think learning CSS is way harder than learning hundreds of class names. Once you get to know it, Tailwind really improves the speed, but you have to live with the fact that your HTML templates will become much more heavy because of all the classes involved. The main drawback I see with this is, again, tightly coupling your content to your styling and the fact that you'll be adding one more dependency in your project which will automatically lead to slower onboarding times for new developers and more processes you have to keep in mind while working. Let me know in the comments if any of these views is too controversial, please consider liking this video, subscribing to the channel and thank you for watching.